Hey guys, welcome back to the Girlfriends and Goals podcast YouTube channel. My name is Samaria and I am joined by my best friend and co-host, Neosha. And today we're reviewing Married at First Sight season 15, episode 16. 16, okay. <laughs> um, and this was where they were talking with their friends about and their family about what to do. So it's probably going to be a short episode, but please guys make sure you are subscribed. We're trying to hit 1K and we're very, very close. So please subscribe to the channel. And then um, next week we'll be back with decision day commentary. Yeah. Do you, I was going to ask you, do you want to give our predictions yeah. at the end? Okay. <laughs> you read my mind. I do want to <laughs> give our predictions. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's start with Lindy and Miguel. All right. I didn't have much on them. Uh, Same here. Okay. I thought it was funny, though, when she was talking to her friend and her friend was distracted by her kids. And she goes, oh, don't do that around Miguel. I'm like, now, Lindy, she has kids. That's an excuse. You were distracted by everything. <laughs> Not only that, but the friend seems like she got some stuff going on. I don't know if her kids are like newborn or what uh sounded like she may even have twins because the way she was like oh he's he's with the both of them and something but the friend was distracted and also on edge mm -hmm. so they both broke down I'm like okay now Lindy girl <laughs> yeah so that was that was really interesting um Miguel at least when they got to like everybody else you know he admitted it's been a, a rough week and a half or whatever and um, of course he took ownership for it I don't know I I feel like these two are probably gonna stay married mm. yeah so when he kept saying like oh I don't know if I can handle her um, big explosive nature or her yeah. outbursts and her just not being able to keep her attention in on him. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I feel like these two could say yes in the short term. Like I could easily see them both saying yes on decision day, but long term, I just don't know what this looks like where it seems just like such a big difference where Miguel is used to, I guess, interacting with people of a, of a certain way <laughs> and she feels like I just don't want to change myself. So yeah. somebody's going to have to give. Either one person's going to have to give, or they're both going to have to give a little bit. Yes. And I don't know that either one of them can do that long term. Yeah. I'm not convinced. I I personally think it needs to be both of them because obviously she can't be like if you were having a, conver a conversation with her that's really serious. She can't be distracted. That's annoying, and she also can't like be on edge all the time you know um but also mm -hmm. he needs to find less condescending ways of speaking to her <laughs> and um acknowledge like yeah he, he needs to be less condescending and less controlling I will say the friend did give pretty good advice like when you're in those moments and emotions are high sometimes you just have to gauge okay like who needs the most support in that moment I think that they're both emotional people but yeah. they're emotional in different ways like hers is very outward and expressive and his is like we don't know what you're thinking <laughs> you might want to sleep with one eye open <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious oh, yeah. okay um do you want to give your oh well I guess that was your prediction yeah my prediction is that they'll both say yes Okay. uh will they make it to say two years I'm not convinced shoot maybe by by the time of the reunion let me stop well that <laughs> and them a baby children I don't know like she's already on edge and I feel like putting her in that you know yeah. babies and children do bring on stressors not to say that babies are bad but sometimes it's a more high stress situation when they first get here you have to get used to it uh girl could barely handle the fake baby and I don't know if she was putting on yeah. but um also every time we see Miguel and, and them in this apartment if they're not sitting down Miguel is doing some type of housework he's either cooking <laughs> or he's cleaning <laughs> He's very domestic, that Miguel. He's very <laughs> domestic, but hey, 
that's good. Look, that means that he'll probably make a great partner for someone who's looking for someone who has that strong suit. Yeah. Uh, but I just thought that that was interesting. And I'm like, okay, when kids come along, what does this look like? Mm. Is Lindy going to be chilling, stressing out? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that that's interesting. I definitely don't think they need a kid. If they do stay married, I think it'll really behoove them to take the time and learn each other and see how see how it goes for about two years before bringing a baby into the mix I think um, and now that's for even some couples who have met oh. and then, you know oh yeah even if you here. feel like you oh we're so strong like still yeah. take your time because the first child is also like it's always a huge learning curve for most people or most I, couples I do know one couple who was together for like a, a good um four or five years and they were engaged for a good a bit of good bit of time too, because um, in their culture, two siblings can't get married in the same year, and so like apparently, the year they got engaged, her brother was getting married, and then the next year her sister was getting married. Well, so dang! They get married till the year after. So by the time they got married, they had you know already been living together for a while, and they were ready to have a kid. So they immediately yeah. got pregnant. Um, yeah, well, that's that's a unique yeah. situation. It really <laughs> is. I just, I thought about them, y'all, my bad. <laughs> okay, so that's on Lindy and Miguel. Yes, on decision day, both of us think. And um, maybe we'll hear about a divorce later on. But hopefully not. If they stay together, I do want them to work out. Yeah. To wish back. I, I think that goes without being like, we want, if you if you say yes, we want y'all to make it happen. But yeah, you know how married at first sight goes. Unfortunately. Um, Kristen and Mitch, I have a little bit more on them. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more. Um, okay. Mitch isn't 100%. <laughs> uh, and it's like time, time is almost up. So if you're not 100%, I feel like that's your answer. Uh, and I guess his friend said something about, oh, it's hard to find someone you enjoy. Don't, why mess it up? And like, if that's not settling, I don't know what it is. So I, I was conflicted about that, but I was even more conflicted because I like Kristen. And when she said something like, okay, fine, I'll take that. See, with, with you at this point, anything I can get, I'll take. I said, Kristen, shut up right now. <laughs> like, stop saying things, okay? I do not want that for her. So yeah, I, I hated this. I hated how she handled this episode. I need her to stand up and like, get out of here it's like she's been going back and forth all season yes, One episode right? we're like yes Kristen stand up for yourself don't just take the crumbs and then the other episode she's just like whatever I can get just Sahara Desert thirsty <laughs> Sahara so, Desert thirsty <laughs> like it, it, she's just like all over the place you don't really know what to expect is like okay girl are you going to stand up for yourself or are you just going to take what you can get I don't know this whole episode was giving me desperate yeah I'll take what I can get insecure not confident and but some episodes she's shown up and been like no I'm not going to take that and it was weird because I feel like she took moments when they were in front of the other couples I feel like to really mm. stand up for herself and then that got me to thinking in those moments where she's standing up for herself kind of to save face and put on to the group that, oh, I'm not just going to take whatever. I'm confident. Yeah. Um, I'm not desperate. But then with him, she really, really, really does want it to work. So some of that in energy is kind of, you know, like toned down to be like, okay, I'll take what I can get because she doesn't want to push him away. Yeah. So she, she, she actually said if he, if he verbalized that he wants to um, stay married to me, I would say yes. So it's like her yes is dependent on him and not so much on what she thinks is best for herself. At least in this episode, like she could decide and go based on her. Um, but it doesn't seem like she's thinking about her in this episode. What I will say though, is a lot of times when people go their separate ways on Married at First Sight, there's like hostility there. And I think what I can appreciate about her and about Mitch is that they're cool regardless. Like there's no bad blood there. Um, they're just like parting amicably. So I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say though, so she said something about how she feels calm and at peace. 
but then Mitch needs to give a grand gesture of validation. And so within this episode, it kind of went from, he needs to give this grand gesture. He needs to say how he feels about me and do all the, these things to, oh, well, I'll, I'll take what I can get. So she mentioned being confused a few times and I'm, I'm confused. So uh, girl, which one is it? Right. I don't know. Um, I feel like Mitch is on the fence with her. So I think he was sitting down with his brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were grabbing coffee or having a drink, but I can appreciate the brother trying to get to the root of why he's not feeling like he's in love. Um, You know, maybe trying to rule out like, okay, are you just a runner? Are you expecting too much? But I don't even know that he's expecting too much. I just don't think that Kristen is his person. And if she was, he would know it. I I will say though, um, because of his age um, and just kind of where he's at, I could see him saying yes mm-hmm. with the hopes that he'll fall more in love with her over time. And he will, I could see him settling. And I, I do feel like that's the case for a lot of couples. Like in real life, there are couples mm-hmm. who that happens for. It's just as watchers, we don't want that. You know, like- nobody wants to watch a couple who's like oh I'll settle and we'll just get used to being settled (laughs) so what this reminded me of and not to get too off track was uh, the Indian matchmaker we also watched that show on Netflix and uh, Seema Auntie uh, like the matchmaker always talks about how like love will come later love will come later so I understand like for Kristen I don't want that to be her story because I want whoever's with her to want her and love her fully um, and not hope like five years from now that it comes. But then I think of shows like the Indian matchmaker and in certain cultures where it's more about like compatibility and the puzzle pieces. And then when you, once you've built a life together, that's love, um, you know, so. Um, But also they're, they're just not compatible too. Like she would probably have to give up her dream or hear him nag about it. And he would, so I don't think they're that compatible. I think they're just mature enough to (laughs) like handle each other and not lash out at each other, you know, very often. They're cool. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, They can, they can probably do life together. They're cool. Yes. But I just don't, he's just not that into her. Like I, I don't even know that she is she even that into him or is she just making herself you know like I don't I, I think because of the process she's more into him yeah I think than she would be if she met him in a coffee shop for sure okay yeah. cool uh at the end he did say that he doesn't want to lose her so it seems like they like each other uh so he doesn't want to lose her probably because nobody else is going to put up with his Mitchisms. <laughs> well, that's another thing of like just where he is in life, his age. He knows how he is. Yeah. And who who is gonna have the patience for all that? I will say though, him being on the fence about okay, if they both say yes, it sounds like he's trying to pull a noy and be like, oh yeah, let's kind of take a break. Yeah. Maybe not live together. That whole thing. Question. Okay, Mitch. Right um okay so was that your what's your prediction for decision day I think that he will say yes and I think Kristen will say yes Hmm. I think both of them will say yes um I don't once again I don't know that this is going to be a long-term thing but I do think both of them will say yes I think if she has to go first I wouldn't be shocked if she said no Mm, interesting I thought I had my answer until you gave yours (laughs) oh lord well what was your answer before (laughs) no I'm gonna give a new one uh I I am hopeful that Kristen will come to her senses and say no I am hopeful that Mitch will be sensible and also say no Um, just because they like each other they're cool with each other but I think he knows more than her I think she knows it too but he's just probably the one who would be more comfortable being vocal about it Uh, I think he knows they're not forever partners so are you saying what you think they're gonna say or what you hope they would say (laughs) yes (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. okay. I I think. What do you think they're going to say? Not what do you hope they're going to say? I think that they're going to say. Well, I'm hopeful. <laughs> I think they're going to say. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me stop. Um, I think they're going to say no there. Okay. Okay. I'm so wrong. what you hope they're going to say and what you think they're going to say line up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next couple. <laughs> Alexis <laughs> and Justin. Huh. Lord have mercy. I it was so hard for me to watch their scenes. Like I almost like skipped through them <laughs> just because I'm so over seeing Alexis yes, in the like in the theatrics, girl. Yeah. So I, I think this show is good for Justin to realize who he is and how he is. And hopefully on the other side of this, he'll understand what type of partner he needs. And I think Alexis already knows what types what type of partner she wants and needs. Um, she just needs to find him. I have a question for you. Okay. When Justin said, um, I gave up Maya with the intention of a yes on decision day from Alexis, mm -hmm. what did you think of that? I because he Maybe the first time he gave up Maya, I would accept that. Like the very first time when he sent her to the camp, mm. I would have been like, oh yeah, he's expecting his marriage to last long. But because of things that happened in between then and like the final giving up of Maya, I'm like, there's no way, either you very hopeful <laughs> or you just like ignoring. Cause he, he labeled the signs that this wasn't gonna end well he knew and so i'm not buying it for the second time around the first time yes second time no so do you think that he did that the second go around to manipulate as like her. Uh -huh. to manipulate her mm -hmm. maybe so maybe not manipulate that's a strong word but maybe to show like oh this is the last good college yeah, try. this is why but you should say yes yeah subconsciously I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, so this whole episode with them, it kept coming up that Justin's been in his head. He's been in his head, his head. Yeah. Okay, he may have been in his head, but it's also been in front of his face. Right. So once again, with the gaslighting, mm -hmm. um, even his mom was co-signing it, but she hasn't seen That's all of what thing. we've seen. Yes. And so um, that was just really hard to watch with Alexis kind of manipulating the situation of how he's been such a big problem. They have all these problems when she she is all but said that she's done on decision day. And she's kind of been all over the place with her actions, but for the most part, she's shown that she's been done. So it was hard for me to watch him admit to these things when we've seen it, even he's seen it. Yeah. But I think if there was some manipulation that we saw on camera, my assumption is just an assumption is that if, when the cameras were gone, mm -hmm. that there could have been more actions or conversations that caused him to be confused as well, mm -hmm. really about where she stood on the relationship. Yeah. But that was just really hard to watch because, I mean, I think we're all still all kind of confused about what exactly he was in his head, quote unquote, about. Hmm. I think two things can be true. So I think he has been in his head a bit, but this is one of the situations where 85% of the time, mm -hmm. I think he was like in his head. That was very valid. That was where yeah. he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. And this is why I don't like, I I've learned this in my own life. And people who are outside, they, they can only go by what you've said and they don't have the full picture so I think they're maybe drawing on their own experiences with you um which could be different than your experiences with your actual partner so yeah it it's good advice because I do think sometimes he gets in his head but without knowing everything if I were his mom 
like knowing what I know, I would have said, oh no, but you need to be in your head. But she doesn't know that. So sometimes talking to the friends and the family just isn't helpful like that. Um, so yeah, it, it bothered me a little bit. <laughs> if anything, I think it kind of made it worse because when he got back with Alexis, he was confirming all the things that she was saying yeah because his mom co-signed it and she that kind of gave her the ammunition to be like finally you get it or yeah see I was right no girl <laughs> you, you know what it is Justin is um he's had like this epiphany about himself right and so because this is something that he never like saw and his eyes are open to it now and I think this is natural just like with Ben you know he mm. realized oh there's a lot of stuff that I'm not prepared for and so I'm I'm a part of the problem which yeah obviously it's a relationship with two people if there are problems you're probably in on them you know nine times out of ten but I think because it's something that was just like revealed to him, he's having this like revelation about who he is as a person. Now he's like only looking at the situation through those eyes, through the eyes of his new revelation. He's not mm -hmm. looking at it, you know, sensibly or from all angles. Everything now, because this is a new thing, everything mm -hmm. now is through the eyes of, wow, I really do get in my head. And so I hate that for him. <laughs> um yeah, because it's not going to serve him well with Alexis. That, um, and then also, you know, I don't know how close he is with his mother, but that whole conversation about the intimacy. Mm. <laughs> Was it a little awkward for you? I would have been okay with him having the conversation with the mom about it because I understand people, some people do have those relationships with their mothers. I mean, this is how you got here. But I wish he wouldn't have disclosed it to Alexis. Mm. She would have found out after the fact on TV. But mm. yeah. yeah, Alexis Maybe says that, that just shows his naiveness. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he can be naive. Uh, I don't know if it's him being like, we see it as him being naive, but he probably sees it in the moment as him being vulnerable with his wife. Like, mm. if there's one person you can be naive with, you know, maybe it should be your partner. And I think he's... If, if your partner wasn't her. <laughs> and that's that's the message that Justin needs. I need to send a telegram or something. Like, that's the message he needs. Um, but Alexa said, like, oh, I just doubt that he can show and prove now, you know, now that Justin has accepted that, I guess he's the problem or whatever. Um, she's like, I just, I just doubt that he can, he can show and prove. I did like that when she was listing the things that he could improve on and saying like, I could probably be softer for you. I could probably do this. Um, she stopped and was like, well, let me let you tell me what things you think I can be better on. I think that's a good practice, even if it is something where we're like, okay, she's still going to break up with this man tomorrow. <laughs> I still thought I could see you roll your eyes, but I still thought it was a nice gesture. And so I, I have no patience that. for her like <laughs> her and her 511 baby, baby. I know. She only said it once this episode when they went to their last dinner. Yeah. But I have very little patience for her. So whenever she was talking about that whole thing, I was just like okay yeah. I will say though by the end of the episode I feel like Justin has caught on his energy gave me tapped out but his energy been given tapped out and he still let Maya go <laughs> even uh even more tapped out like the scene when they were laying in the bed he was just like okay okay <laughs> I guess I guess uh what I, think, I think he's tapped out Mm -hmm. Even when she was just like, oh, I don't know where I stand. He was just like, oh, you might say yes, you might say no. He he said something uh, that I just wanted to talk about briefly. So he said like he wants her to initiate sometimes mm -hmm. uh, and he doesn't feel wanted. <laughs> and that's probably because he ain't wanted. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that by her. You know, I think... Alexis will be good with with someone else. I think Justin will be great with someone else, um, not necessarily each other. So, what is, what is your prediction for these two? I think they're both going to say no. I think Justin's going to say yes if he goes first. 
God, I hope not. I, I think he's going to embarrass us, girl. I think so. Oh, Lord have mercy. He's going to embarrass us. And then I think it's going to, I think maybe, a, <laughs> I think Alexis. You think she'll say yes just for the theatrics of it all? You know, I think because there's this page on Instagram that is speculating mm. <laughs> that a couple changes their mind 24 hours after. And I feel like it could be them. I feel like if he says yes first, she might say yes to not embarrass him. And then later on be like, now you know we should have said no. But I, oh, I, I, I could be wrong. It's all speculation at this point, girl. So I don't know. <sighs> Well, I'm I'm going to stand on my two no's. Okay. Um, I could be wrong, but that is, I hope they both say no. Okay. And I don't know. Something about Justin's energy is giving me, I'll say no. If she says yes, if she goes first and says yes. He's going to say yes. I could see him saying yes. Like, oh. I think if he goes first, he's going to say yes. God, I hope not. Uh, it's going to be so embarrassing. I can't wait for decision day. Um. Uh, okay, Stasha and oh, Peyton. one last thing on them. Yeah. She said something at the very end of their segment where she said she had to be forced to be committed. Ooh, Merit at first, first sight. Please stop bringing these people on who really don't want to be married. Period. So yeah, yeah. that what that tells me is even if you found like a great match for her it still could be very problematic for her to not want to run. So I don't, I don't think know. So. I, don't I disagree. Think so? I think if they gave Alexis the type of man that she wanted, because she said, I still want to be married. I still want like those things. I think it's just that Justin isn't her guy. I think if it was someone who she was naturally attracted to, someone who was, ugh, I can't believe I'm about to say this term, but alpha male like I think we would see a difference Alexis really I do <laughs> I do let us know in the oh, comments wow. if you agree with me I could be wrong but I, I think she would be singing a different tune had she had a different person uh, I think a lot of the things that she's done this season she would have never done if it, if she would have been paired with a different person and that's why I feel for my guy Justin a lot uh but yeah I, I think she would be more willing to work on problems or even see herself as the problem you know when she is um in ways that she wasn't able to with Justin because she's just not into him I think she would have been more attracted I don't know if she would have did a complete 180 yeah. I don't know about that we're not complete 180 but I do think she would have been I don't think we would have seen half the things we saw this season with her. Well, let's hope that fifth time, the fifth time is the charm. So this is the fourth <laughs> proposal. Oh, this is the fourth one. I thought it was the third. No, she said she's had three proposals before this one. Justin is four. He said he didn't propose, so technically. Well, you know what I mean, <laughs> engagement, whatever. So fifth time is the charm. That is funny. Okay. okay. Stasha and Nate. And Nate. <laughs> Uh, all right I loved the conversation that Nate had with his dad and a lady I don't know who she was but when he was like how do you have fun with kids I'm so happy that his dad said you know it's possible um mm -hmm. because I think he's he's dealing with his own childhood and that's what has him so rigid on that so I love that his dad who you know is probably like one of the more rigid people in his life is like, no, it's possible, you know, you can. Mm -hmm. And so um, I appreciated that conversation. I appreciated his transparency on feeling like he's losing his identity because I'm a person where if I feel like I'm losing my identity, I am gonna like either close up or fight back. And so I kind of <laughs> related to him a little bit. And um, I think Stasha's friend was right when she said, okay, maybe he just needs reassurance that you're not about to like, pack his stuff up and kick him out you know at the first sign of trouble and all of that so yeah yeah I will say though um maybe this is tapping into the episode before a little bit but when he like this nervousness he has about like well I'm gonna be out on the street or I won't have any place to go I was just like okay Nate I mean even when people buy a home together get an apartment together a person has to leave typically and you kind of pick and choose which person it makes sense to stay or go. Yeah. Now, granted, it's her house, she'll probably stay and you'll go 
get another place like yeah. everyone else. So I don't know. I felt like I, I get the underlying nervousness of it and that like you're in her space, mm -hmm. but just from like a practical standpoint, when people break up, you don't live together no more. Yeah. So you and you're gainfully employed too. So it's like, you'll be okay. Uh, you'll it, go to a place like you did before. <laughs> exactly. It'll hurt. It'll sting. You know, obviously you'll have to adjust and adapt and, and go and find a new place. And that sucks, but you'll be fine. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> She wants him to have more relationships slash life experience. And I, we're back at him not being in love, really bothering Stasha. I was going to ask you, yeah. do you feel like now that it's like coming down to the wire? Because I felt like with them, this is seeming like it's going to crash and burn, like all within one episode. I hope not. But mm -hmm. do you think that now that they're down to the wire, she's starting to feel a little bit in, insecure about the age difference and that now because like at the beginning she didn't have she didn't know him right yeah so it's like okay the possibilities are limitless you know where it's like she doesn't know him to say if he's mature or not mature if he acts older or younger than his age but now that she's been with him and she knows him and she knows that he's younger yeah. do you think that she's feeling more insecure just about the age difference and how that may translate into life experience and all that I you know what I think it is mm. I think I don't think it's that she sees him as like too young or anything I think it's that she thinks he's too grown to have not been in love with somebody and the fact that he had lived with somebody and was just going through the motions and didn't love her, I think scares Sasha. I think she's like, okay, well, you be going through the motions with me and you'll love me. So is this what I'm signing up for? Which I don't think is fair to him. <laughs> I, I think she's like making a jump. I get it. She can only deal with what she has in front of her, but she just needed the reassurance too. I think I'm going to fall in love with you. I already like what I see and he's so caught in. I can't believe you don't see how much I'm trying that he can't give her the reassurance that she needs. So yeah, I, I think she's afraid that at his big age, he can't say he's loved anybody. And if in 34 years you've dated women, you've lived with a woman and you can't say you, you couldn't have said you loved any of them. Why am I so different? Yeah, I think her concerns are valid, but I also think that it's a bit unfair because she knows, like everybody else knows, this process is eight weeks. Mm -hmm. It's not guaranteed that it's going to click for you to be in love or love someone in eight weeks. Like even in the real world, that might be a stretch for some people. For sure. Um, I mean, you may go on two or three dates in that time period. <laughs> I mean, come on now, right. two months. Uh, unless you just drop everything in your schedule for this new person mm -hmm. that you're with. Um, so I think it's, it is a little bit unfair and it's not his fault that he's 34. <laughs> Sorry, that like, sounded funny. <laughs> it's like, it's just kind of is what it is. So the same way how we were kind of getting on him about being like, oh, you know, she's in a rush to have a baby because she's 37. <laughs> it's the same way that she can't be like, well, oh, you don't have no life experience because you're 34. And I mean, we're talking about a matter of just a few years, four years, um, three to four years. So um, I will say, though, her concern is valid. And I think it's more valid because of where she is in life. I think if this was Stasha at 29, mm -hmm. I don't think she would be feeling as uneasy about entering into a situation with him where he still needed more time. But for her, she's ready to pull the trigger on a baby within a year. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I don't have time to be wasting with someone who, and, and potentially having a baby with someone yeah. who could go through the motions and live with a person or get to this age and not be in love. So I think it's valid, but I think because of where he is in life, where she is in life, it's made a bigger issue. If she were 27, I don't know if she would be as like, oh, you know, you haven't said you love me and da-da-da-da-da. It's because 
I think for her, when she gets past decision day, she's ready to hit the gas full throttle yeah. and build their life together versus he's still trying to ease into things. And she's like, I don't have time for that. Yeah, I definitely think he could have been more reassuring and he was focused so much on himself that he missed that opportunity. But uh, he's probably annoyed that she keeps bringing it up too. But yeah, I think he could have said, hey, it's going in that direction. While I can't say that now, I can easily see myself saying that if things continue to go well for us, if things continue on the road that we're currently on. Yeah, I will say so. Something that I noticed about him, and I don't know if it was the way that it was edited, mm. but it did seem like he could kind of like get snappy, yeah, <laughs> like real quick. And she's yeah. kind of keeping her calm. And I don't know if it was the editing, but some of the stuff he was saying, like, "Well, I don't love you, and you're triggering me," and I don't know. And then the way he kind of walked off, I don't know if it was that more was said. Yeah. Um, but I think when she was like, oh, well, we should be leaning on what the experts told us to use, mm -hmm. um, I think is valid. Mm -hmm. But I also think because of the amount of time and when you're in the heat of the moment, you're not always thinking about, well, let me reach out and hold your hand while we're having this back and forth. I feel like at that dinner that they had, Nate was asking her certain questions that she was answering. And I think for him, it was a thing of, okay, so you do think I, I show you love and care every day. You do think that I'm being consistent and whatever. You do think that I'm showing up for us in our relationship. You can see my commitment. You can see that I'm trying to make us a priority. So you can see all these things. What more do you want from me? And then she's just like, oh yeah, you're doing all that, but you're going through the motions. So I don't know that she's clearly articulating exactly what it is that she wants. She just, she wants an I love you and that's fine, but you can't say, oh, he's just going through the motions when you've, you've clearly answered all his questions and you see it's not just going through the motions that he's genuinely trying to make this work. So I think that yeah. was where it kept going in circles. And I was like, how many times are we going to do this where he's asking the questions, you're answering, it's clear to other people that he kind of cares, right? And you're like, oh yeah, but still it's just going through the motions or still I don't see any depth there. And it's like, how how deep? <laughs> and I think it was frustrating for him because she, yeah. you're right, she wasn't articulating it. I think what she should have said is, I don't fully trust you. Cause that's what it all boils down to. Like if she would have been like, yeah, you're doing that, but I still don't trust you. Um, which for him would still made him feel like, okay, well, I'm, it'll never be enough for you. Right. Because at Wait. this point, it's not just, you're not trusting my words. You're not trusting my actions either. So what yeah, it's like, what else do you need from me? Yeah. But I think what it boils down is too, is I don't trust you. And I feel like you have it in you to waste my time. Like, <laughs> that other girl's time. That, that's what she should have said not oh well the hugs don't mean anything girl get past all that <laughs> just come out and say I don't trust you and I don't need you wasting my time because I'm trying to you know get done what I want to get done that is so funny because I would probably say just like that <laughs> so yeah but but I think her beating around the bush being like well no it's it's not you know da, da, da. even the whole love thing yeah. um I think even if he said it, she probably still would be like, but how will I know, <laughs> you know? Cause I think she said something like in the beginning of the season where she was like, I, in order for me to believe it, I have to like see it. So you can't tell, like, if you tell me the sky is blue, I know I can look and see that it's blue. Yeah. Like she's very black and white. And so even if he told her, she may say, oh, well, how will I know? Yeah. I can definitely see her saying that, but what it all boils down to is trust. She don't trust this man um, that he's, being genuine mm. um and i i think for her because of where she's at in life now she's thinking about okay if he's pushing back on having kids okay if he still can't say i love you yeah. how can i really trust this man to move into my home and like really be willing to move forward and not do it at a turtle pace mm -hmm. Oof. well 
I think I think they're gonna say yes on decision day because I don't see anything that's so wrong with them that they're not gonna go forward. I think these are things that can be talked about in several like over several conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily like immediately, but over time and over several conversations, I think their issues are resolvable. And I don't like how he came and I was like, okay, well, I don't love you. So and I understand he was frustrated, but watch how you talk to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you giving off some energy that's really strong right now. And I, I like soft energy. So relax. But uh, but I do think like, yeah, their problems are solvable and they're gonna say yes on decision day. I think they're going to say yes on decision day, but I I want them to both say no. What? Yeah. You I, want them to say no? I, I don't think that they're right for each other. Really? Mm. Really. Me, Elsha. Uh, yeah, and the my main reason mm -hmm. is while I do think that all these things can be talked over with the conversation, um, I can potentially see them both saying yes and this becoming a thing where Stasha's having to constantly validate and affirm for him that like it's okay to move forward on these things in life. I don't feel like Nate is confident in where he is in life to move forward on certain things with her. And I think... Um, I think that for her own benefit, she should respect where he is and that he's not ready. Interesting. Do, do I do I think that he'll is going to take him ten years to be ready? No, but what I don't think is a good idea is for her to be like hitting the gas to move forward, and him kind of like waving the red flag, but I'm not sure, I'm not ready. Like as a woman, I don't want that for her to always be in the position of trying to affirm for him that like, no, we're good to move forward. No, we should be doing, like, where's your confidence in it? Okay, but he's always gonna have to affirm that they can move forward like emotionally. She's never... If we're going just by what you just oh, said. Oh, for him too. I agree. For him too. I, I don't think, like, on, on the same thing. Like, I, I think they're great in terms of their vibe, mm -hmm. surface level. But I think for both of them, like, even her as far as relinquishing control and, like, making him feel comfortable in her home. yeah. I just, I, I love them as a couple. I just don't think that that piece of them is matched at this point in time, the way that it should be. Now, I'm not saying it won't work. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that even him being like, well, I don't know, like I didn't really go into this, really wanting to have a baby yet. Like, and I get people are able to convince people to be ready to have kids before they're ready. People do it every day. But the fact that he's kind of already at decision day and he's still like, I want to be more secure with like being able to provide and I want to like, hmm. he seems kind of like, eh. I, I, I don't know. I, I have feelings about this. I think it is possible that when they become like one after the show, <laughs> because this is just eight weeks. So the goals that you had eight weeks ago are probably still the goals that you have today, right? And so for Nate, if it's eight weeks ago, I want to be more financially stable, he's going to want that still, right? But I think it's possible once they become an item for real, for real, no cameras, and maybe he gets a little bit more secure with what they're making or seeing what they're making as a couple, as opposed to me versus her, then I think that could alleviate some of the the anxiety that he has around, oh, well, I have to make a certain amount of money. Um, so maybe if they can get to a point where they are an item and they can like somehow seal, seal the deal on being confident about each other and him being comfortable with, what they make as a couple as opposed to oh that's what Stasha makes and this is what I make 
then I think he could be ready if it is just a financial thing. Do you think it's going to make him more comfortable with seeing it as one big pot when even like smaller decisions around like design stuff around the house? She's just like, eh. I I don't I don't think it's going to be easy, but like I I do think when you're with a partner who's making money and money is the big deal, I think there's a possibility, it's just me, I think there's a possibility of you being like, okay, I can still live comfortably because my partner makes enough together, you know, like we make enough together. And that doesn't mean like, this is all I'm gonna make. I can still pursue more money. It's just that we're already comfortable while I'm pursuing the more money as opposed Mm -hmm. to, he's been in a place where he's not comfortable with what he makes. Like he's making what 150 in California. I don't know. 150 in California is definitely different from 150 here in Georgia. Right. But um, yeah, I think it'll just take some time for him to be comfortable with them as a couple, as opposed to this is her income. This is my income. I think it's possible, but I I'm still for them saying yes on decision day and for them as a couple, but yeah, I want, I want them to say, I feel like they'll say yes, mm-hmm. and I hope that they make it and they're able to work it out. Yeah. But um, if I had my way, they would say no, and Stasha will get with someone that just clicks with her and is like, foot on the gas in the areas that are important to her, the love part, the baby's part finances part and then for him the same thing that's what everybody wants though you know oh let me meet Although somebody. otherwise you end up like um Kristen <laughs> <laughs> like of course everybody wants oh let let me meet somebody who wants the exact same things that I want in the time frame that I want them and then we can go together like that's everybody's dream but also like, um when he was everybody. talking about um how like she was doing things to trigger him. So that was the other thing. It kind of, so this is an extreme, but it reminded me of Lindsay and Mark. And I don't know how deep these triggers run for him, Mm -hmm. but he did seem to be pretty triggered by some of the stuff she was doing and saying and however she was doing it and saying. Mm -hmm. Um, And it kind of reminded me of that, even when she said like, oh, you know, obviously his mother, childhood stuff and, you know, the things that he's been through, it seems like what I'm doing is like triggering him. Yeah. And when he said like, oh, well, I don't know if I want to be with someone who triggers me. Yeah. It made me think back to um, Lindsay and Mark and not to that extreme because Lindsay was crazy, but it did get me to thinking on, on that piece and like, oh, is that something he feels like he can really move past? Mm. Okay. We'll be back next week for decision day, guys. Please let us know your final predictions in the comments. Also, let us know what you think about the things that we've said and the comments we've made about these couples. Check out our podcast. We have over 60 episodes. And if you love our dynamic here, you're going to love our dynamic on the podcast. So anywhere where podcasts are available, Girlfriends and Goals podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. (laughs) All right, (laughs) we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.